Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. They shall look upon him whom they pierced. Words taken from the gospel for this Good Friday. The Passion. The last temptation of his majesty was very simple. Come down from the cross and be like us. Save us where we are. Thus we hear in the gospel, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. And one of those robbers who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Notice that the devil tempted our Lord through others this time. Not directly, as he had done in the desert. Thus it was passers-by, the bad thief, Gesmus, and the Jewish elders. Let's be sure to avoid being such an instrument of the devil ourselves. Instead, let's always be prepared for passive purgation, where God uses or allows others to rub on us. But we, like the saints before us, always responding well and with patience, ever seeking to excuse the weaknesses of fallen nature and strive to love them despite their meanness. For our meditation today, let's consider two things. The desire of fallen man as opposed to desire and will of his majesty. To make this clear, perhaps we can rephrase the last temptation to come down to be something like this. If you want to be our friend, come down and be like us. There's supposed to be some equality between friends. Come down and show us you're our friend. Be our chum. Make your home here. Make this your dwelling place. Make this world our common home together. Lighten up and give way to us in our needs. We can think of this way as being the egalitarian way. The way of the common ground or lowest common denominator. Egalitarian is a fancy word coined after the French Revolution, so basically leveling everything, flattening out, which always ends up being an inversion, an inversion. It's about absolute equality between all levels of reality, both on the inside of man and the universe around us, including God himself, a sort of cosmic leveling. Thus, this ideal says to his majesty, since you are like us, then come down and prove it and be like us. Now, this revolution that forced egalitarianism upon the world is still with us in many ways, maybe more than ever before, causing the same egalitarianism to be a mark of our times. It is everywhere to be found. Consequently, we're brainwashed into thinking all things are equal now. We're told that there are no differences between male and female. And so we see many men acting and dressing like women and vice versa. We're told that there are no differences between children and parents. And so children rise up against their parents and parents treat their children like friends. Animals have the same rights or even more at times than men. We've even sadly seen a few strange people getting married to animals, if that's even possible. People being severely punished for harming animals while freely aborting their own offspring. Or people calling pets their children. We see various perversions on a par with natural marriage being between male and female put up to the same level. But worst of all is the equalizing of the supernatural order with the natural order, such that we are told that all religions are equal. All prayers are pleasing to God. 
Even inside the church, we've been told His Majesty Christ Jesus our Lord is in all people, such that we merely need to draw Him out of them, instead of putting Christ in their souls through baptism. And thus, one famous preacher would say over and over until his dying day, We do not bring Christ to the pagan anymore. We draw him out. I guess everyone is really a crypto-Catholic, an anonymous Christian after all. Whatever happened to St. Paul's teaching that we're all born children of wrath? I guess the scriptures aren't inerrant after all. For many, this same Lord and Savior is just a sort of chummy friend, an equal. When they do look upon the Lord as a father, it is a sugar daddy father, giving them consolations, making them feel good, making them feel like their religion counts. They got something out of Mass when they attended. Is this not apparent in how many Catholics today receive his divine majesty and holy communion on the hand? Come be my chum. We see it in the so-called life teen masses where the liturgy is brought down to the level of the fallen teen world. Using drums and rock and roll instruments and tunes and so on. We see it in the banal music used throughout the church at this time. We see it in the flattening, the flattened out round churches we built over the last 50 years. I've even been in a couple of churches where you go down to the altar. We find it in the lack of proper dress and decorum. Oh, God will understand, they say. He accepts you as you are, we've been told. Leveling everywhere we look, we find it. Thus, this last temptation is really just this. Please do it our way. Do things in a way we can accept. Come down to our level, our fallen level, and think and act like us. And then we will follow you. That's the world's way. And it has shown itself for what it is. Devoid of light, devoid of grace, and devoid of fruit that lasts. This egalitarian idea is the way down. It's an inversion. It's a revolution. As Aristotle pointed out so long ago, bad men make bad friendships. We might say fallen men make fallen friendships. They will not last. They will only produce fruits that are rotten, not the true fruits, such as peace, joy, and happiness that last. Now, His Majesty shows us the correct way is up. Thus, we hear from St. John's Gospel, Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, then he was. That's why we're here today, Good Friday. I will draw all things to myself. Now this he said, signifying what death he should die. He's not going to come down to help us. But he's going to help us by drawing all things up to himself. Here's the lesson. Christ will not be known. Nor will he be of any help. Without the cross. He will not be known without his cross. He will not be of any help to us without the cross. We find many signs of this in the life of the saints. Most notably those reaching the level of the mystical marriage. He drew them up to him. Giving them the stigmata. Such as to St. Francis of Assisi and Padre Pio. Nailing St. Teresa of Jesus to the cross with him. On Palm Sunday, St. John of the Cross experiencing complete rejection from his community. Rita, St. Rita receiving a thorn from the crown of thorns. The victim soul, St. Lidwin, kissed all the instruments of the passion on Christmas Day. 
Blessed Alexandrina paralyzed for life got up and made the stations of the cross in a rapture over and over. Christ will only marry us through the cross. He makes us intimate friends by having us share in his wounds, not by his coming down to our fallen state and our lacks in worldly ways. Thus, he has indeed agreed. He has indeed agreed to become like us in everything but sin, But in doing so, it must be done by way of the cross. Even consummating the likeness or equality on the cross. Thus, he even looks like sin nailed on the cross between two criminals. And so his answer is really yes. I have come down from heaven and I have become like you by taking each and every sin you commit upon myself. So, you want to think as you want, as you desire? Say what you want, write whatever you please, read and watch whatever you think best for you? Okay, says his majesty. Then I will make equality between us possible by allowing my sacred head to be spit on, to be mocked, ridiculed, beaten, crowned with thorns. I will be silent when I could speak. I will look upon the desolation of Golgotha. Then we'll be equal. You want to disobey and talk back to your superiors, your parents, your priests, talk bad about them? Want to think and do your own thing? Okay. And I will make equality possible by obeying my Father perfectly, even unto the death of the cross, even unto the separation of my body and my blood. Want to wear more fashionable and casual clothing? Then I will have my clothes stripped off and my body scourged and ultimately nailed naked to the cross. We will be equal. Want to indulge your passions, enjoy the delights of the flesh, give way to feelings of lust, anger, sloth, gluttony. While away your time playing silly video games and watching movies. Okay, says his majesty. Then I will make equality between us possible by allowing my sacred and perfect body to be beaten and lacerated and pierced. I will drink gall. I will sweat blood. I will smell death at the place of the skull. Then we will be equal. Want to run away and live your own life. Free yourself from the strict overlording parents and all the petty rules of a traditional Catholic life and all this homeschooling in this traditional parish. Then I will suffer at the hands of rulers and their servants, both Jewish and secular. I'll submit myself to a provincial governor, to an effeminate Herod. I will run to the cross and have myself nailed upon it, unable to leave and run away. Then we'll be equal. Want to separate from your kith and kin? Spurn your family heritage, name and blood? Then I will subject myself to the cruelty of the mob and even suffer abandonment of friends and relatives. I will look upon my holy mother, shed tears, and I will give her away and finally have my precious blood and soul separated from my body then we will be equal. What more could I have done for you that I did not do to make equality between us possible? No wonder, St. Paul wrote, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. The way, then, is not human egalitarian leveling, which demands this majesty to come down to us to our fallen state. 
but for us to cooperate with him in his effort to draw us up to himself upon the cross, to share the equality of true and divine friendship. We conform to him. We do not make him conform to us. That's why you're here at this parish, because we follow that principle. And if you're bucking, you don't want to conform to him. You want us to conform to you. You want him to come down from that cross. Enough of that kind of equality. That one draws down to hell. The other draws up to heaven. Take your pick. I will let our beloved St. Bernadette get the last word. I want to follow thee and be like thee, O my Jesus. I would rather be crucified with thee than enjoy all the pleasures of this world without thee. May we all be saved souls together in heaven.